الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد وإنا وكتاب منظومة الآداب لابن عبد القوي المرداوي رحمه الله This is our second sit or our second lesson The author رحمه الله he said ويقبل نصحا من شفيق على الوراء حريص على زجر الأنام عن الردي He said ويقبل he accepts نصحا the advice من شفيق one who's concerned one who has worry and concern على الوراء on everyone the world and everyone and the Muslims he's concerned for them حريص he is striving على زجر الأنام عن الردي he is striving to preventing the people because we took the word الأنام is the ins and the jinn he prevents them from what عن الردي the evil the bad things so the characteristics here that the Shaykh Rahimahullah is saying is that one who accepts the advice if he's advised he accepts and in the previous line we were speaking about is there not amongst you a person who has passion in this religion and knowledge who can give me his heart and wants to listen attentively that which is going to be said to him and will also accept the advice of a concerned person who is striving to prevent in the creation from filth and incorrectness. So this is a characteristic that the Shaykh Rahimahullah is trying to attribute to himself, which is that he is a shafiq. Anahudhu shafaqatin. He is one who has concern. Also he is a haris. He has hirs. He is striving. What is he striving towards? على على الزجر عن المنكر عن المنكرات to prevent the people from the evil prevent the people from the things that are wrong مرغبا أما مرغب في أضدادها and he is urging them and pushing them towards the opposite of that which is the good and what we really need to understand is from the great characteristics the noble characteristics that a scholar has one of them is to be a shafiq a person who's concerned. كما قيل as it was previously said. It was previously said by the scholars. يراد للعالم عشرة أشياء. Ten things are needed from a scholar. A scholar, ten things is what is needed from him. And these are the ten. Number one, الخشية. He has fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two is... والنصيحة advice three والشفقة he is one that is concerned four والاحتمال احتمال means he will consider he will consider والصبر patience والحلم forbearance whatever harm is put towards him he can bear it he can carry it forbearance he has it والتواضع humility the scholar has humility والعفة عن أموال الناس and that he has he is chast from the wealth of the people والدوام على النظر في الكتب and that he is consistent and continuous in looking at the books of the scholars. He reads a lot. وَقِلَّةُ hujab, And he has little ga- gatekeepers. He has little gatekeepers. بَلْ يَكُونُ بَابُهُ لِلْوَضِيعِ وَالشَّرِيفِ Meaning, he doesn't have a door where people can't come in. Rather, يَكُونُ بَابُهُ لِلْوَضِيعِ وَالشَّرِيفِ his door, anyone can enter it. Lil wadi' the one who is low. Wadi' is the one who is classed low. Was sharif, the honorable one. He can just enter onto the scholar and he will, he's, he's open for him. Those are ten characteristics that a scholar has to, he has to have. 
So the Sheikh here, Rahimahullah, he's telling us that he has وَيَقْبَلُ نُصْحًا مِنْ شَفِيقٍ One of them, he has it here. He has what? His Shafiq. عَلَى الْوَرَى حَرِيصٍ عَلَى زَجْرِ الْأَنَامِ عَنِ الرَّدِي And the issue that we really have to understand, inshaAllah ta'ala, we're going to expand on it later properly, inshaAllah ta'ala, is to be one that strives to prevent the people from evil and to stop them from the wrongdoings that they do. That's a noble characteristic. The Shaykh went on to say, فَعِنْدِي مِمَّا فِي الْحَدِيثِ أَمَانَةٌ سَأَبْذُلُهَا جَهْدِي فَأَهْدِي وَأَهْتَدِي The Shaykh said, with me is. Narrations, hadith. فَعِنْدِي مِمَّا فِي الْحَدِيثِ With me and that which I have is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa hadiths in which is entrusted with me. I have been entrusted with this knowledge. What does he mean I've been entrusted with it? He means it's an amana. And remember when it's an amana, somebody entrusts you with something, then you are responsible to make sure that, that the thing that you were entrusted with, you convey it or you bring it back in the way it was given to you. So he's trying to say Allah entrusted me with this knowledge. He placed a responsibility over me. And the place which I have to give it to is those who, huh? his creations. I have to go out there and educate the people. Okay? Because this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he placed knowledge in the hands of his people. And he ordered them subhanahu wa ta'ala to give it out. Allah ordered them to give it out to the people. And Allah wa ta'ala gave the scholars a severe warning. And Allah wa ta'ala gave the scholars a severe warning if they conceal that knowledge. As he said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَقْتُمُونَ مَا أَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْبَيِّنَاتِ وَالْهُدَى مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا بَيَّنَّاهُ لِلنَّاسِ فِي الْكِتَابِ أُولَٰئِكَ يَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّاعِنُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, those who conceal that which has been sent down from the clear-cut evidences and the guidance, after we have clarified it to the people from the book, or in the book, those people conceal it, أُولَٰئِكَ يَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّهُ اللَّهُ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَىٰ's curse will be upon them. وَيَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّاعِنُونَ And the curses will also curse them. So it is basically... A continuous curse that is upon them. Those who conceal the knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said, And Allah also said, And Allah says, when the people in that surah, Surah Tawbah, that when the people go out to the battle, there should be a group who remain and stay back. That group that stay back, the responsibility that is upon them is what? Is to understand the religion. Is to educate themselves and to learn. And the reason why they are learning the religion of Allah is that they can convey it and, then they, and that they can warn their people. إِلَيْهِمْ When they come back to them, so what we learn from that is, or the characteristics that we learn uh, from uh, the scholars' characteristics is, that knowledge is an amana. Allah has entrusted them with this knowledge. And they have to spread it, and they have to give it out. And the shaykh is saying, I'm doing that. سَأَبْذُلُهَا جَهْدِي He said, I will put all my efforts in. سَأَبْذُلُهَا جَهْدِي He said, I will put all my efforts in. فَأَهْدِي I will guide وَأَهْتَدِي and I will guide, be guided through it. I will. وَلِذَلِكَ The hadith which are narrated by Imam Al-Tabarani in his Mu'jam that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked أَيُّ النَّاسِ أَشَدُّ عَذَابًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Who are the people who have the severest punishment the day of judgment? The Messenger said, عَالِمٌ لَا يَنْتَفِعُ بِعِلْمِهِ أَمَا لَا يُنْتَفَعُ بِعِلْمِهِ عَالِمٌ A scholar 
that is knowledge is not benefited from. That is the one who has the severest punishment. He has the what? Severest punishment. So it is important that the scholar he spreads the knowledge in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him. And that is what the Shaykh Rahimullah is saying here. The knowledge Allah gave me and the understanding. I am here, inshallah ta'ala, to give it out. Sa'abdhuluha. Sa'abdhulu is bifatih al-hamza. Sa'a. Bifatih al-hamza. With that, the Arabs, they say, Badaltu shay'a. Abdhuluh. Badalan. Ay a'ataytu. A'ataytuhu. Wajud. Wajud. Bihi. I gave it with my effort placed in it. The word jahd in the Arabic languages it means at as Al Jawhari said in his As Sihah. Al Jawhari, as he said in his As Sihah, which is a dictionary book. The word jahdi means what? At ability. Then the Sheikh went on to say, Ala kullumar rama salama tafal yasun jawarihahu amma nahallahu yahtadi. The Sheikh said, Ala kullu ah. The word Ala is an nida, he's calling out. He's saying, Ala kullu marrama salama. Everyone who wants peace and safety. Everyone who wants safety. Uh, what shall you do? Ala kullu marrama. Everyone who wants rama, wants as salamata. He wants safety from the punishment of the hellfire. And he also wants safety. From the hardship of this world and the black heart that occurs from this, then what, he should, what should he do? Falyasun protect. What is he going to protect? Jawarihahu your limbs. Ammanahallahu yahtadi. Protect your limbs from that which Allah has prohibited. Subhanahu wa taala. Yahtadi, you will be guided. Anyone who wants safety and he wants success. And he wants safety from the punishment of Allah Taala, and he also wants safety from sins, and he wants to be safety from the shackles, huh? That are placed upon a person who goes against the command of Allah. If you want to be safe from all of that, and you want to be from those who are from the pious people, the righteous creations of Allah, wa yakuna lahu fi maidan al-salihin majal. And if you want to have a place, if you want to have a seat in the gatherings of the people of piety, the day of judgment, then فَلْيَصُنْ جَوَارِحَهُ Protect your limbs. That which Allah has prohibited from you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now I'm going to read on you, inshallah ta'ala. عِمَادُ الدِّينَ الْوَاسِطِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ عِمَادُ الدِّينَ الْوَاسِطِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ He said a very powerful statement. عِمَادُ الدِّينَ الْوَاسِطِ Shaykh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah said about him, this is a pious person, a respected and a high caliber individual. Rahimahullah. Rather, he has a book where he talks about his rihla, his journey. I advise students of knowledge to read it. So, I'm going to read a statement of his in this particular matter because it's very important. He says, A person accounts himself, accountability of yourself. في حركات جوارحه in the movements of your limbs a person accounts himself in the movements of his limbs السبعي your seven limbs oh. so the limbs that you need to protect are seven from when do you protect it until when من حين طلوع الشمس إلى أن تغيب you protect and you account it you account yourself and you look after and you protect your limbs from movements, your seven limbs, from when the sun rises to when the sun sets. من طلوع من ها من حين تطلع الشمس from the when the sun rises إلى أن تغيب until the sun sets. And they are what? وهي العين it is your eyes والأذن and your what? And your ears. Here are the seven limbs that you need to protect. Wallisan. So it's your eyes, your ears, your tongue. So three. Wal 
and your stomach. Wal farj, your private part. Wal yad, your hands. Wal rij, and your legs. These seven, you need to protect them from when sun rises until sunset. Now the Sheikh is going to mention each of those seven, how we protect them. He said, لِيَحْفَظَ lisana, The person to protect his tongue. عَنِ الْكَلَامِ فِي مَا, في ما لَا يُثَابُ عَلَيْهِ To protect your tongue from the speech that you're not rewarded for. You're not rewarded with it. وَلَا يَتَرَتَّبُ عَلَيْهِ مَصْلَحَةً And no benefit comes to you from it. No worldly benefit nor a religious benefit. وَلَا يَتَرَتَّبُ عَلَيْهِ مَصْلَحَةً دِينِيَّةً أَوْ دُنْيَوِيَّةً مِمَّا يُحْتَاجُ إِلَيْهِ no worldly benefit comes to you regarding it, nor a religious, religious benefit comes to you regarding it. So that means protect your tongue. Protect it from that which does not come bring you any reward. There's no maslaha, no benefit that comes, whether it's worldly or hereafter. وَيَحْفَظُ And you protect. الْعَيْنَ You protect your eyes. عَنْ كُلِّ مُحَرَّمٍ you protect it from every haram. Khususan specifically, النظر إلى الأمرد والنساء. You protect it from looking at amrad. Amrad is the man who looks like a woman. والنساء and the women. You protect it from the amrad and the nisa, the women. الأجانب, women who are foreigners from you. ولو كان ذلك بغير الشهوة, even if it is without desires. وَيَحْسِمُ مَادَّةَ النَّظَرِ عَنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ لَا يُثَابُ عَلَيْهِ وَلَا يَتَرَتَّبُ عَلَيْهِ مَصْلَحَةً And that the person, he protects his eyes from any, anything that will not bring you any reward and there won't come from it any form of benefit for you. Looking at things that doesn't concern you, it doesn't bring you any benefit. نعم. وَكَذَلِكَ يَحْفَظُ سَمْعَهُ and, and the same is that you protect your, you protect your tongue. Sorry, you protect your hearing, your, your ears, sorry. وَكَذَلِكَ يَحْفَظُ You protect سَمْعَهُ your ears. فَإِنَّ الْمُسْتَمِعَ شَرِيكُ لِلْقَائِلِ Because the one who is listening, he shares with the one who is saying. You're the like, you're like him. When somebody is saying something and you're listening to it, it's like you're saying it as well. وَكَذَلِكَ يَصُونُ بَطْنَهُ In the same way you have to protect your stomach. عَنِ الْحَرَامِ وَالشُّبُهَاتِ From the prohibited things, the things that are haram. والشبهات, and the things that are doubtful. فَكُلُّ جِسْمٍ نَبَتَ مِنْ حَرَامٍ فَالنَّارُ أَوْلَى بِهِ For verily every body that was nurtured, نَبَتَ That was nurtured مِنْ حَرَامٍ From prohibited things. فَالنَّارُ أَوْلَى بِهِ The hellfire has the first right over it. وَآكِلُ الشُّبُهَاتِ the one who eats doubtful things, كَيْفَ يَتَنَوَّرُ قَلْبَهُ أَمَا كَيْفَ يَتَنَوَّرُ قَلْبُهُ How will his heart find light? أَمْ كَيْفَ يَزْكُوا عَمَلُهُ Or how will your actions be purified? يَزْكُوا How will it be purified, your actions? وَكَذَلِكَ يَحْفَظُ الْفَرْجَ وَالْيَدَيْنِ عَنْ جَمِيعِ مُحَرَّمَاتِ الشَّرْعِ وَمَكْرُهَاتِهِ And the same is, you protect your private part. And your two hands from every prohibited things by way of Sharia. The Sharia prohibited it. وَمَكْرُوهَاتِ And the things that the Sharia dislikes. وَكَذَلِكَ يَحْفَظُ الرِّجْلَيْنِ And you also protect your two legs. And you also protect your two legs. وَمَتَى أَخْطَأَ And whenever any one of those seven that were mentioned, if ever a shortcoming comes to you, comes from, occurs from you, Regarding those seven, وَمَتَى أَخْطَأْ أَوْ زَلَّ بَادَرَ بِالتَّوْبَةِ You hasten to repentance. You hasten to what? To repentance. And one of the things that also has to be added to those seven is your heart. وَكَذَلِكَ يَحْفَظُ الْقَلْبَ Protect the heart and that is those, the most important one. And the person tries and he strives وَيَجْتَهِدُ فِي حِفْظِهِ مَهْمَا أَمْكَنَا You protect your heart as much as you're able to. والله الموفق الله سبحانه وتعالى is the one who gives توفيق. the sheikh went on to say 
ويكب الفتى في النار حصد لسانه the sheikh says a person will go into the hellfire face first يكب means face first the person's face will enter the hellfire first حصد لسانه because of the evil which his tongue has brought him and the sheikh rahimahullah he took this from this hadith the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu which is in Sunan al-Tirmidhi hadith in Sunan al-Tirmidhi and Imam Muhammad also narrated in his Musnad that Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he said قُلْتُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ O Messenger of Allah أَخْبِرْنِي tell me this is the hadith O Messenger of Allah tell me بِعَمَلٍ and action يُدْخِلُونِ الْجَنَّةِ that will place me into Jannah وَيُبَعِدُنِي مِنَ النَّارِ and will distance me from the hellfire. So the Prophet ﷺ told him a lot of things. He told him the five pillars of Islam. And then the Prophet ﷺ told him that the fasting is a shield. And he told him that the sadaqah, it, is, it, 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 it is extinguishes the sins, like the water extinguishes fire. And the Prophet ﷺ also spoke about the prayer that a person prays at night. And the Prophet ﷺ also told Mu'adh that the, the head of the affairs is Islam. And the pillar of it is huh, the Salah. And the top layer of the hump of the camel is Jihad fi sabilillah. When the Prophet said to him all of that, he said to him, Ala ukhbiruka bi milaki dhalika kulli. Shall I tell you something? That will overcome everything which I have mentioned to you. Shall I tell you something that will overcome all of that which I have mentioned? Then the Prophet grabbed his own tongue and he said to Mu'adh, Kuffa alayka hadha. Protect yourself from this. Then Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, wa inna la mu'akhadhuna, will we be held account bima natakallamu bihi, that which we say? Will we be held account for the statements that come out of our mouth? Then the messenger said, Sakilatka ummuka ya Mu'adh. Mu'adh, may your mother lose you. وَهَلْ يَكُبُّ النَّاسَ فِي النَّارِ عَلَى وُجُوهِهِمْ أَوْ عَلَى مَنَاخِرِهِمْ إِلَّا حَصَائِدُ أَلْسِنَتِهِمْ Mu'adh. What is it that makes the people enter the hellfire face first? Accept that which their statements in which they have said and that which their tongues have brought them forward. Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali rahimahullah he commented on this hadith. Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali he commented on this hadith and he said in his great noble book Jam Ulum wal Hikam he said الحديث, this hadith mean the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal Yadullu, it indicates ala anna kaffa lisani. It indicates that safeguarding your tongue and protecting your tongue. Wadabtahu wahabsahu. And to imprison it. It is huwa aslul khayri kulli. It is the foundation of all good. And it is the foundation of what? All good. And he said, وَأَنَّ وَأَنَّ مَنْ مَلَكَ لِسَانَهُ فَقَدْ مَلَكَ أَمَرَهُ And anybody who governs and controls his tongue, فَقَدْ مَلَكَ أَمَرَهُ That individual has governed, has, con- has control over his own affairs. وَأَحْكَمَهُ وَضَبَطَهُ So that is very important. If you want to gain good, if you want prosperity, if you want happiness, you need to remember that the tongue it w- is that which can bring you good or that can bring you uh, evil. That is, it can bring you good and it can bring you evil. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in an authentic hadith Imam Muhammad narrated in his Musnad on the authority of Anas ibn Malik that the Prophet said لا يستقيم إيمان عبد حتى يستقيم قلبه. A person 
his iman will not be steadfast until his heart is steadfast. وَلَا يَسْتَقِيمُ قَلْبُهُ And your heart will not be steadfast حَتَّى يَسْتَقِيمَ لِسَانُهُ Until your tongue is steadfast. It is very important. If you want your heart to be steadfast, then your tongue has to be steadfast. And one of the greatest evil traits that the tongue has is, is speaking about that which does not concern you. Al kalamu fi ma la ya'anik. Speaking about that which does not concern you. And if a person learns to stay away from that which does not concern them, and that they only speak about that which concerns them, then that person really has a good, good foundation for themselves. As the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مِنْ حُسْنِ, من حسن إسلام المرء تركوا ما لا يعني. From the goodness of a person's Islam is to leave off that which does not concern them. And it was also narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, even that though some scholars have weakened this hadith, and the previous one as well, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, أَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ ذُنُوبًا The ones who have the most punishment the Day of Judgment are أَكْثَرُهُمْ كَلَامًا The ones who speak the most فِيمَا لَا يَعْنِيهِ That which does not concern them. Wahb ibn Munabbih Wahb ibn Munabbih رحمه الله, he said, he said, كان في بن إسرائيل رجلاني They used to be in the people of Israel بن إسرائيل They used to be amongst them two men بلغت بهما عبادتهما أن مشيا على الماء Their excessive ibada and their worship of Allah it reached a point where they could actually walk on water and مشيا على الماء They used to worship Allah so much that they were able to walk on water فَبَيْنَمَا هُمَا يَمْشِيَانِ فِي الْبَحْرِ As they were walking on water once. إِذْ هُمَا بِرَجُلٍ يَمْشِي عَلَى الْهَوَى These two individuals who are worshippers from Bin Israel as they were walking on water and their ibadah made them reach that stage. They saw a man in the middle of the air flying. بِرَجُلٍ يَمْشِي عَلَى الْهَوَى This man is walking in the air, flying. فَقَعَ Both of the ones who were walking on the water said to him, يَا عَبْدَ اللَّهِ O slave of Allah, بِأَيِّ شَيْءٍ أَدْرَكْتَ هَذِي المنزلة? How did you reach that stage that you're at? To walk on air. He said, بِيَسِيرٍ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا He said, I reached that with little from this dunya. I only took little. فَطَمْتُ نَفْسِي عَنِ الشَّهَوَاتِ and he imprisoned, I imprisoned myself from desires. وَكَفَفْتُ لِسَانِ عَمَّا And he said, I safeguard in my tongue from that which does not concern me. وَرَغِبْتُ فِيمَا دَعَانِ إِلَيْهِ And I showed passion in that which it called me to. وَلَزِمْتُ الصَّمْتَ And I was consistent upon silence. فَإِذَا, أقم... فإذا, أق... فإذا أَقْسَمْتُ عَلَى اللَّهِ If I swore by Allah, أَبَرَّ قَسَمِي Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala will do anything I swore by. وَإِنْ سَأَلْتُ If I asked Allah, أَعْطَانِ He gave it to me. Muwarriqin al-ajliyu, al-ajliyu, al-muwarriq al-ajli, he said, muwarriq al-ajli, he said, Amr al-ana fi talabihi mundhu kada wa kada sana, lam aqdir alayhi, wa lastu bi tarikin talabahu. He said, a matter in which I am in it, seeking it, I am still looking to gain it. A matter which I am seeking it, and I have been seeking it for this, 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 this much years, which I still haven't got the, uh, which I still haven't gained it. وَلَسْتُ بِتَارِكٍ طَلَبَهُ And I'm not going to leave seeking it. 
قَالُوا ذَيْسَتُهِمْ وَمَا هُوَ What is it that you're looking for and that you're seeking? And then he said, الْكَفُّ عَمَّا لَيَعْنِينِ It is to stay away from that which does not concern me. And then he said, فَإِذَا تَرَكَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا لَيَعْنِيهِ If a person leaves off that which does not concern him, وَفَعَلَ مَا يَعْنِيهِ And he does that which concerns him, all of that which concerns him. فَقَدْ حَصُلَ إِسْلَامُهُ His Islam is good. So a person has to realize that to stay away from that which does not concern you. Abdullah ibn Mubarak used to say, لو كان الكلام بطاعة الله من فضة Pay attention to this powerful statement from this noble Imam, Abdullah ibn Mubarak. He said, لو if, if, the speech of Allah. Sorry, sorry. If speaking in obedience of Allah, لو كان الكلام بطاعة الله. If speaking in the obedience of Allah is silver, then silence from sinning is from gold. You see how powerful it is to be silent than it is to speak. Fudayl al Iyad went on to say, Ma hajjun, there is no hajj. Wala ribatun, and there is no Buddha controlling for the Muslim land, and that has a noble status. Wala jihadun, and there is no jihad. A shaddu, which is greater, min habsil lisani, than prisoning your tongue. Walau asbahta yahumuka lisanuk, asbahta fi ghammin shadid. And he said, if you wake up in the morning and your tongue is your main concern, then you have woken up in distress, which is severe. You've woken up with a severe distress. That is if you understand the reality of the tongue and the, pay, and the, the weight which it has. وَإِرْسَالُ طَرْفِ الْمَرْءِ أَنْكَ فَقَيِّدِي وَطَرْفُ الْفَتَى يَا صَاحِ رَائِدُ فَرْجِهِ وَمُتْعِبُهُ فَغْضُطْهُ مَا اسْتَطَعْتَ تَهْتَدِي The Sheikh said, وَإِرْسَالُ طَرْفِ الْمَرْءِ أَنْكَ فَقَيِّدِي وَإِرْسَالُ إرسال means what? إطلاق البصر Unrestrictedly open your eyes the word uh, irsal is to freely open your eyes, just to look at everything around you. The shaykh here right now, he means specifically huh, that which is not permissible for you. So here the word irsal in the Arabic language basically means itlaq, is to unrestrictedly do something. Or is to unrestrictedly let something. So bi irsali, unrestrictedly, at-tarfi, the tarf here is the eye. It is unrestrictedly looking at everything. The Sheikh said, Anka. It is severe. And punishment. You see? The Sheikh, after he mentioned, brothers and sisters, after he mentioned the tongue and its danger, the Sheikh, he followed it. Atba'ahu bi dhikri afat nadari. He followed it up by mentioning the dangers that are in looking that which is not permissible for you. Because the majority of people sins and their disobedience of Allah إِنَّمَا تَتَوَلَّدُ مِنْ فُضُولِ الْكَلَامِ وَالنَّظَرِ It comes from, it occurs from nonsense speech and also nonsense in looking at what that which is not what concerns you. And the biggest places in which shaitan, he enters onto a person, is those two. وَهُمَا أَوْسُعُ مَدَاخِلِ الشَّيْطَانِ It is one of the biggest doors in which shaitan is easily able to enter onto a person or use a person to disobedience of Allah is their eyes and their tongue. 
And the sad thing about these two limbs is they never get filled up, filled up, filled up. You never get tired of looking, and nor do you ever get tired of speaking. But the, tu- the stomach is different. Your tongue, you never get tired of speaking. Because a person, it will always talk. Whereas, and looking is the same. But your stomach is different. Because it can get full. Well, that is why it used to be said by the scholars, and it was previously said, Arba'atun la tashba'. Four, they never fall. Four are never full. Aynun min nadarin, eye, your eyes is never full from looking. Wala ardun min matarin, and the earth is never full from rain. It always wants, wants water, and it always wants water, and it always wants water. Wala alimun min athar, and a scholar never gets full up from an athar. Wala untha min dhakar, and a woman never gets full from a man, and a man never gets full from a woman. Looking at that which is not permitted for you is the asal of balaya. It is the asal of the bala and the harm and the problems that a person can go through. You know why? Because looking is the messenger of the private part. The private part sends a messenger. Who are Rasulul Farj. He sends that messenger. When you want to go to invade a land, or you want to go to a particular place, you always send a messenger to verify the place and to look at the place for you or whatnot. If you are happy and you're content, you go. If you're not and you're, you don't feel happy and you're not, you don't feel content, then you don't go. And that is exactly like the private part. If it's content in what you saw, the private part wants to work now. So the eye is the messenger in which it sends. And it tells the eye to check out for him this particular individual. And so the eye does the scanning and the observing. And then the private part is the one that executes what it saw. Based on that, it will either go forward and do it, or it will choose not to do it. So if the messenger has been prevented from him, or he's been dismantled from him, huh? uh, his ability to look, then the private part will never be able to succeed in what it wants. What is it that the private part will do is that it will fall to zina. So a person has to understand not looking at that which is not permissible for him. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told us in the hadith, um, which is in Imam Ahmad's Musnad, and Imam Hakim is narrated in his Musnad, Mustadrak, on the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Imam Ahmad narrated on the authority of Imam al-Bahili, that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa he said, أَنَّذَرُوا سَهْمٌ مَسْمُومٌ مِنْ سِهَامِ إِبْلِيسِ that looking is a poisonous arrow from the poisonous arrows of Iblis. Anyone who lowers his gaze. Lillahi for the sake of Allah. Awrathahu Allahu halawatun. Halawatan. Allah will inherit to you a sweetness. Yajuduha fi qalbihi ila yawmi yalqah. Sweetness which a believer will find in his heart until he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.